A new Zelda game is finally here. So when I was replaying Breath of the Wild and collecting some Corsair Bee Honey, I was struck with an idea. What if I could find ingredients from the game in real life to brew up a Zelda-inspired mead, just in time for the new game? So grab your Master Sword and Hylian Shield, and let's find out if we can make a mead Link would be proud to drink. If you watched my Super Mario Hazy IPA video, then you probably have guessed that I'm a big fan of Nintendo and no other video game franchise has captured my heart than The Legend of Zelda, having played every Zelda game I could touch and putting countless hours into Breath of the Wild. You could say I'm pretty obsessed, and my hype for this new game is very real. No. Oh, come on. One of the more interesting game mechanics in the recent games has been the incorporation of foraging and collecting food to cook and create new dishes that replenish hearts or give status upgrades. And man, there are a lot of options out there. It can kind of be a bit overwhelming when you first get started but eventually you'll find the best foods and recipes. And there's even some websites that can help you craft the perfect recipe. However, not all ingredients in the game are edible or at least would make for a good fermented drink. And when you start to narrow things down, the options become a bit more manageable. So when I started designing recipes, I had a few ideas that could work. I decided to go with mead because I felt like a mead would totally be something that existed in this world. Sorry to all the Lon Lon milk fans, no fermented milk today. All the recipes would start with Corsair Bee Honey because this is a mead after all, and that will provide the main fermentables. But from there, we can use other ingredients to spice things up. Speaking of spice, the first idea I had was to use apple and goron spice. Apple is already readily available, and according to the in-game description for goron spice, it's made from several types of spices. An initial wave of spiciness paves the way for sweetness. So to me, that could be a mix of cinnamon, maybe cayenne for the heat, to make some sort of spiced apple mead. My next idea was to use cool safflina, and red choo-choo jelly. Cool safflina could be interpreted a few ways, but I thought maybe mint would be a close substitution. And red choo-choo jelly made me think of fruited jam or jelly. Something like strawberry would go great with mint. But my last idea was to use wild berry, which could be any berry. Usually wild berry in our world is a mix of berries, but the wild berry in the game looks a lot like a raspberry. And to pair with that, maybe some type of herb, something like a Hyrule herb, which the game just describes as a healthy herb that grows abundantly in the plains of Hyrule. Not very specific, but it does give some room to be creative. And I thought that time would be a nice compliment to the raspberry. Plus, come on, hero of time, I mean, it just works. So I decided to go with option three, a wild berry thyme meat. But there's a ton of other options you can go with. I mean, there's so many other fruits, veggies, and herbs in the game. So let me know in the comments what you would make. So with that decided, I headed out into the game to find these triforce of ingredients, and then did the same in real life. For the Hyrule herb, I harvest a little thyme from my garden. For the wild berries, I foraged some frozen raspberries from the grocery store. You could totally do fresh raspberries, but having them frozen just gives you a leg up on the process, and the freezing and unthawing will help break them down a bit more. And lastly, I picked up some coarser bee honey. Hey, listen! Hey, Link here. I just want to pop in real quick before you run off to the comment section or click off. Yes, I know that's not real honey, it's vegan honey. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. I just want to say that's what I'm using. You don't have to use it. Feel free to use real honey. No sweat off my back. Um, but if you want to use the time now to go down in the comments and let me know how big of a fool I am, as if I don't already know that, or just let me know that I'm not making real mead, you can do that now and we'll wait. Good? Yeah, you feel better? All right, great, cool. Like I said, you do you and I'll do me. Uh, and if you're ready, let's keep going. In addition to the key ingredients, I'll also be using some water. Fermato, or any yeast nutrient, and some pectic enzyme to help release more of the juice from the wild berries. For the full recipe, check the description for more details. So to start, I added the raspberries into a fermenter bucket. I let them thaw for a little bit before adding them in. And then I added the pectic enzyme and let it sit for about 30 minutes. This just gives it some time to start working that fairy magic. Then I followed that up with some fermato to help the yeast out and create a better fermentation. I added some filtered water to raise the volume up to about one gallon. And I'm totally having this flashback right now of the water tempo in Ocarina of Time. You know where you had to raise and lower the water in the temple? Back and forth and back again? Sorry. Anyway, I then started adding the honey. I don't make a lot of meads, so I just kept adding honey until I reached the original gravity I was hoping for. Adding a little bit of honey and then a little more water up to the 2 gallon mark. And eventually I ended up with an OG of 1.075. For the Hyrule Herb, I decided to use some food twine to bundle up the thyme, and then I just added it in. I didn't want to overdo it with the thyme, but I just wanted to give it a nice touch of some interesting flavor. Lastly, I added the yeast, which I'm using Lavlin D47, which is a wine yeast that's pretty popular with meats. I sprinkled it on and then closed it up. 
I opted for a blow off tube since I was pretty close to the top of the fermenter and there's a lot of sugars in there to ferment. I set it in a cool spot around 67 Fahrenheit and let it rock. The next day it was going and as you can see the pressure is building up on that lid. So for the first few days I would open up the lid and push down the fruit a bit so it didn't dry out. It's also said that pushing down this fruit cap can help release any trapped CO2 that can explode out like a bomb chew. I then let it ferment for about two weeks, at which point the fermentation had completed, and the final gravity came in at 0.994, hellishly dry. And this means it comes in at about 10.5%. Since it was drier than Gerudo Valley, I decided to back sweeten a bit. Step one was to stabilize the meat, basically to stop the yeast from fermenting any additional sugars that I add to back sweeten. There's a bunch of ways to go about this, and my buddy Man Made Meat has videos all about it. Ooh! But my usual favorite way to do it is to use a combination of potassium sorbate and Camden tablet, or potassium metabisulfite. If you have any sensitivities to sulfites, maybe consider using one of the other methods, but to me this is really the easiest way to do it. First I needed a couple glass jars, four small carboys, I added the stabilizers into the sanitized containers, portioned out for one gallon each. Then using a siphon, I wrapped the meat off the fruit and split it into the jars. Once filled up, I let the stabilizers work for 24 hours. Now I can add any sugar I want to sweeten this back up. Cane sugar? Sure, why not? But I'm opting for more honey in this case. And I'm adding about four ounces to each carboy, giving it a good shake to stir in, and then took a sample to taste and check the gravity. I found that four ounces raised the gravity back up to about 1.011, which tasted perfect to me. Not overly sweet, but just a touch that rounded out that wild berry tartness. I then repeated that for the other jug. From there, we're pretty much done. I cold crushed the jugs to get any remaining sediment to fall out and then package them up. I decided to carbonate some and keep the rest still with one little magical addition for effect. Man, these bottles really do look like something straight out of the game. Red potion come to life. So obviously it's quite red from all those raspberries I added. And I added in a little bit of edible glitter for effect to half the batch. And that's completely optional, but completely way more fun. I dosed one gallon with about half of this tiny container and it worked out pretty nice. The aroma is where the time really comes through the most. And it's quickly followed up by all that raspberry, which leads right into the flavor. And I would say it's predominantly raspberry flavor. I think the thyme does add a little something that makes this more than just one note, but if I were to do it again, I would maybe double the thyme so it sings a little more. The back swinging really helps this to be more drinkable in my opinion. It's smoother going down and balances out that wild berry tartness, but if you like your mead more dry, then you can totally skip that step. Overall, I'm super happy with this one and excited to keep some bottles on hand so I can enjoy them while I play the new game. I love finding inspiration for recipes from games, movies, and other forms of media, and it's so satisfying to bring it to life. But I want to hear from you. What other drinks from pop culture would you like to see? Let me know some ideas in the comments. And let me know if you make something like this or find inspiration from it. Now I'm off to binge play this game. Cheers and happy brewing. <laughs>